Hey everybody, Dr. Brett Scher, Low Carb Cardiologist at LowCarbCardiologist.com. I got a request actually to talk about uh, homocysteine and um, meat diets or high protein diets and if that was a problem, if you had high homocysteine. So first of all, homo, um, when I address homocysteine, I think it's less important what you're eating and more important what your body is doing and I'll explain that. Um, but obviously what you're eating does have some relationship to it. But just so you know, here are two studies I found. One shows increased homocysteine in people who eat higher meat diets. And one shows increased homocysteine in vegetarians and lower homocysteine in, in meat diets. So I think that shows you that it's much more complicated than just what we're eating. So the concept is homocysteine is made from methionine. Methionine is an amino acid that we get from meat and fish and poultry and cheese. So the more of that we eat, the more we're going to make homocysteine. But what's interesting is homocysteine actually does have some variation. So there's a basal level, and then you can find a postprandial level. So if you want to experiment, check it fasting, check it after a big steak or something, and see what the difference is. You're likely going to see some difference. But here's what's more important is our body has a natural homeostasis of homocysteine. So we um, there's a natural breakdown in recycling. So it comes from methionine and you chop off the carbon group, a methyl group, and it becomes homocysteine. But the body can also give that methyl group back to turn it back into methionine, right? So it's sort of like a recycling of it um, and a breakdown of it. And that requires B6, B12, and folate, uh, three B vitamins that help as methyl donors basically to get that methyl group back on the homocysteine to then turn it into methionine. Well, we've heard a lot about methylation, methyl donors, um, B6 deficiency, especially people who have certain MTHFR genetic uh, variations, uh, that they may have a hard time doing that. So in those people, it really doesn't matter what you're eating, your homocysteine is likely going to rise because you can't convert it back to methionine. Right? So even vegetarians can have high homocysteine levels, especially if you have the MTHF, that specific MTHFR genetic variation. And that's where you're going to need to supplement with methylated folate, methylated B12, and B6. Um, and that will help a lot of people, but isn't going to help everybody. So what's also interesting is there is a non-B vitamin way to get rid of homocysteine, and that works through choline. And choline is very prominent in eggs. Um, so that can also be helpful. So what I like to do is, if someone has high homocysteine, and we're concerned about it, want to bring it down. You can do a trial of methylated B vitamins. You also want to screen for how much choline they have in their diet, and maybe adding extra egg yolks is going to be beneficial to bring that down. If you try that, um, and um, trimethylglycine is another supplement that can help bring it down as well with a different pathway than the B vitamins. If those don't work, then you have to look at the dietary intake and then maybe try reducing uh, your meat intake. But you have to ask the question, is it really that important? Um, and there have been some associations with increased cardiovascular risk. Um, is it an association? Does it have to do more with the MTHFR genetic variant? Or does it have to do with diet itself? We don't know the answers to these questions, right? So you really have to approach it from a top-down approach and try different things and look to see where the, where the uh, problem is. But what started this was somebody asking the question, if I have high homocysteine, do I need to avoid eating meat? And the answer is probably not, maybe, but first let's look at your B vitamins, your MTHFR status, how much choline you're getting, and your, um, your trimethylglycine, um, collagen, bone broth, those types of things. Um, those can all help before you start worrying about your meat intake, all right? It's a complicated topic. Hopefully that was not too complex and sort of gives you a brief overview that is not so simple just about what you're eating. If there are any other questions, let me know. But that's homocysteine. You can find more about me at lowcarbcardiologist.com. Have a great day.